Good morning, everyone. I had a comment asking when to train the birds, when to when do you start training, when are they ready for a 500 mile race, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do, I can't illustrate it because I don't have pigeons anymore, but I can tell you how I did it. I would suggest at this time, stop the video and get yourself a pen, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Stop the video and write things down as I go along. Okay. Here we go. At the beginning, we'll start at when you wean the birds. Now, you, I've got plenty of videos showing you when I vaccinate the birds and when I wean them at that age. So take a look at an older video and watch me vaccinate the birds and you'll see the age of the birds. At that point in time is when your training begins. And what I mean by that is you start trap training, you start hand feeding, and you get the birds under control before they can fly. You won't be able to do it to all of them because it's very rarely that you get all your young ones and you wean them all in one day or what within a week. So you have to take your time with it. You put a cage over your landing board and you let, teach the birds to trap in. You don't want to let them fly around or anything like that, get away because of hawks and things of that nature that may scare them. You keep them under control. When you go in the loft and every evening, I'm going to suggest about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the evening, in the summertime when the days are long, that you feed the birds, you hand feed them, you give them all they want. If the pigeon don't eat, don't worry about it, the next day he'll eat. What you have to watch for is that them young birds are drinking. If you see a pigeon squinting, holding its eyes like this here, it's thirsty. You make sure you take that pigeon and dip its head in the water. The bird did not learn where to get a drink. I would advise you at this time to keep the water in the loft so that the birds can find it and make it easy for them to find. All right, let's move on. The birds are weaned and they know how to trap. And you got them under control. They should be coming to you when you come in that coop the next evening to feed them. They should know that it's time to eat and they'll start looking to you. Some of them will start to jump up on you. They, they get very calm, you got them under control. Now's the time to take the cage off the landing board. You put the birds out before you fed them and just give them the run of the loft. You can let them do whatever they want. Don't chase them, don't scare them. Keep them under control. Nice and easy. And they'll go off on their own and flatter around and fly around. They won't go far. And they'll come back. When you had enough and the birds had about 15, 10, 15 minutes of this, call them in. Whistle, whatever you do, whatever noise you make when you're feeding the birds, start doing that and the birds will trap. They should start trapping. One or two might give you a little trouble, coax them in if you can. If a bird refuses to go in, don't feed it. Walk away, feed the other birds, do whatever you have to do. Feed them all they want. 
one time and then leave them alone. Before long, your pigeons will start to fly. Uh, 10, 15 minutes around the loft. Some of them will go off by themselves. You know, they, they're they not strong yet. Take your time. You continue with the same program. Let them out. When they stop flying, you call them in. They go right into the loft. You hand feed them once a day, all they want, making sure that there's no birds not drinking. If you put a late young one in or anything like that, just keep an eye on it. All right, moving on. After a while, the pigeons will start to flock together and fly around the loft. At first, they'll only fly about a half hour. Some of them will come down tired and puffing and but after a long while, I'd say when the birds are about 12 weeks old, 13 weeks old, they start to fly for an hour. They start tearing up the neighborhood. You stay with the same program. The birds fly, they come down, you call them in, you feed them all they want. All right, as soon as they're, they're done and they start to get picky with the feed, remove the feed. And you're done. Walk away from the birds. Leave them alone. The pigeons did exactly what you wanted them to do. Just leave them alone. After a few weeks, them birds will start to fly for about two hours, two and a half hours. When they're doing that, flying for two hours, you could train them. Even when they're flying an hour, you can train them, but don't rush it. Let them, let them fly around the loft. Let them, let them get a little age on them. Now, when they're flying that, hopefully two hours, you could actually take them birds out about 40 miles, but don't do that. Don't do that. Take them out five miles, three miles, whatever you want, whatever, you, whatever program you're accustomed to, three miles, two miles, five miles. You don't have to run them out 40 miles. But, that, but do start running them out when they're flying about two hours. The birds fly, take them home, you call them down, they go in, you feed them as normal, and, the, and, and you're done. You do this as often as you can. You slowly Take the birds out further and further. I would suggest that you only train them on nice days. You take, take your time. When you get the birds out about 25, 30 miles, they can go 60 miles. But make sure you took them to that 30 mile point four, five, six times. You can actually race them from there. That's not what you want to do. You're trying to win a race. You're trying to get real competitive. So you run them out. Now the birds, when they're, I'm going to say they're about, oh, four months old. All right, they're, they're getting pretty old. You can run them out 100 miles. Take them there three, four, or five times. Now they're ready to race. You're ready to race those birds. These are young birds. All right, take your time. The routine is the same. The birds come home. They come down. You call them in. You get them in right away. Whistling and feeding them once a day. Some You're going to get some late stragglers. Be a little careful with them. They're going to make mistakes and things like that. One thing I want to illustrate to you before we get too far advanced. On those initial tosses, whether it be five miles, 10 miles, or whatever it is, don't let up the whole flock. Take your time. If you got 40 birds, let them up five at a time. 
wait 10 minutes, five minutes, be patient and let them come home. Other birds will be training and carry them off. You don't want them to carry off the whole flock. You never want them to carry off the whole flock. You're always trying to do it a little at a time. There's another advantage to that. Even on a longer toss, take your time, go out there, let them up five at a time. And the reason for that is sometimes they got a headwind. And when they got a headwind, the birds will fly low into the wind. That's when they hit wires and trees because the bird in the back of a large flock cannot see the wire. But if you're letting them up four or five, time, four or five at a time, they can see the wire and they'll go over it to the bridge or something like that. They go over it or under it, whatever, that they can avoid hitting something and getting hurt. You could save a lot of pigeons by doing that, letting them up a few at a time. Not only that, when they get hit with other birds, and I used to love this, I took them to Salisbury a lot because there were a lot of flyers down by Salisbury and their birds would be coming home as I was releasing mine. My birds would get in with their birds and go the wrong way. But they didn't go far. They only went 5, 10, 15 miles. So when they got to that loft where the mistake was, maybe they landed, maybe they went down, but the birds were still fresh. The guy may have tried to catch them, he noticed the stray, or he chased it, but the bird is still fresh and he can come home. He makes that mistake one or two times, three times. He ain't going to make it anymore. He wants to get home to eat. So, five at a time, take your time training the birds. All right, moving on. The races come, you got about 100 miles, you pick your spot, you must, must watch the moat. We've gone through that already, how to pull feathers and things like that. If you have to do that, if you want to do that, you can do that. Have it all done, the birds are vaccinated. They, you should have medicated them all when they were younger. Got no coxie, no worms, no, no parasites, no biting bugs. You took care of all those problems. Your birds are really healthy. You should do fairly well in the races now. Now, we're not going to go into taking care of how to win the races. All of that is in the book. You want to learn that, you have to buy the book. I sold 200, over 200 copies of that book. And it wouldn't be fair to somebody that bought the book for me to tell you in a video how to do it. And let me tell you, it's not difficult. It's short, simple, and sweet, and that book is right to the point. So that's where you want to go, and that's how you want to win races, or at least be very competitive. Okay, as far as taking them out three and four hundred miles, young birds can handle 300 miles. If you got them trained out to 100 miles and you did the program, you took them there often, young birds can handle it. Some of them will make a mistake, some of them won't, but they should be able to come home. But as far as the four and 500 mile races, old timers, when I'm saying old timers, I'm talking about hand seen, uh, I'm trying to think of another, maybe Jansen, some of those guys. They were kind of careful with their pigeons. They didn't race yearlings past 300 miles. But I think you can. I think you can train race yearlings to three, four, and 500 miles. Easy, easy three. Four and five. I used to race them and I had no problems going through the program that I just described, training my birds. My birds were always well trained. So getting them out to the four and five, I would wait at least until they're yearlings. When they're two year olds, they're even better. So if you've got a good yearling that performs well in one or two races at, let's say, 300 miles, be careful with that bird. you got a world beater there. He's going to be really a, a great old bird. You're going, to get that, you're going to get that real consistent pigeon on long-distance races. 
Now, feeding the birds for a long distance race at three and four, at four and 500 miles, you want to give them fats. I described that in many videos. You want to give them fats, you want to give them peanuts. Peanuts also to control the birds. They love the peanuts. You've seen my video on peanuts, I hope. If you're a new subscriber, look for that. Pigeons love peanuts and they're good to control the birds. But you, they're also good to fatten the birds up. And they need fats for energy, especially at a 500 mile race, because they're gonna be on the wing for 13, 14 hours, 12 hours, depending on the winds and the weather. You might not get a bird on the, on the day and he's got to get up the next morning. You want him to have energy to fly. And that's where the fats come in. All right, I think I ran, I answered all your questions in this video. It's a lengthy video. I hope you wrote things down. Stop it, go over it, and take your time. Okay, I guess it's that's where I'm going to stop. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and please give it a thumbs up.